Hallelujah, glory be to God, glorious Dios, Bwana Yesu wa sifiwe, hallelujah Psalm 92, we bless the name of the Lord for season 6, the Lord has brought us this far And we give him all the praise and all the honor for bringing us into his presence as we glorify his name Let's pick our Bibles, notebooks, everything that we get as we get on to this journey Of knowing the Lord more and proclaiming his word Psalm 92 a psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. To proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness in the night. To music, to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord! How profound your thoughts! The senseless man does not know. Fools don't understand that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be forever destroyed. But you, O Lord, are exalted forever. For surely your enemies, O Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. He who have exalted my horn. Ha! I love this verse. My head shall be exalted like the horn of a unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil my head my head shall be anointed like the home of the unicorn and i shall be anointed with fresh oil receive the anointing of the fresh anointing in the name of jesus it says in psalm 92 verse 10 you have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox Fine oils have been poured upon me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. <clears throat> they will flourish in the courts of God. They will still bear fruit in old age. Proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no wickedness in him. Beloved of God. Good to see you Pauline and Caesar out of Spain. The Lord bless you for joining in. Please do share the link as the Lord helps you. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 92 verse 1 and 15. The ruin of sinners and the joy of saints. Beloved, let the Christian not fear the pride and power of evil men. Nor be in least discouraged by their impotent menaces. The impotent menaces, the workers of iniquity, are counted as taken as God's enemies. And as much as they shall perish and shall be scattered. Beloved of God, the wicked, in Psalm 92 verse 7, it says, When the wicked spring up as grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. That they are being prepared, they are being marinated over time. To be prepared for the destruction that shall follow. So we should never be discouraged when the wicked are prospering. Beloved, we come on to the book of Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Proclaiming the word of God daily is the purpose of this journey and enabling that we are reading God's word and particularly interacting with his very words. Not just two lines, three lines, but majorly a huge chunk of God's word. It says, the wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears her down. He who is wise, he whose work is upright, fears the Lord. But he whose work, whose ways are devious, despises him. See, a fool's talk brings a rod to his back, and but the lips of the wise protect them. Where there are no oxen, the manger is empty, but from the strength of an ox comes the abundant harvest. A truthful witness does not deceive, but a false witness pours out lies. The wicked seeks wisdom and finds none, but knowledge comes easily to the discerning. Stay away from the foolish man, 
for you will not find knowledge on his lips. Proverbs 14, 8. The wisdom of the prudent is give, give thought to their ways, but the folly of fools is deception. Fools mock at, make mock at making men for sin, but goodwill is found among the upright. Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can share in its joy. The house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Even in laughter, verse 13, the heart may ache, and a good man rewarded for his. A simple man believes anything, but a prudent man gives thought to his ways. A wise man fears the Lord and shuns evil, but a fool is hot-headed and reckless. A quick-tempered man does foolish things, and a crafty man is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Hallelujah! Yes, 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 yes. We just witnessed the crowning of the King of England, King Charles III. We are recording this at 12.01 p.m. in the Kenyan time of 12 p.m. 12, on the 12th of September 2022 at this time. May you be crowned with knowledge in Jesus' name. Knowledge will not just jump onto you. You have to seek it. You have to pursue it. As you read, as you meditate, God is going to release grace and capacity to know him more. Verse 19, he says, Evil men will bow down in the presence of the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. He says, The poor are shunned even by their neighbors, but the rich have many friends. He who despises his neighbor sins, but blessed is he who is kind to the needy. Do not those who plot evil go astray, but those who plan what is good find love and faithfulness. All hard work brings profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. The wealth of the wise is their crown. Hallelujah. There is another crown. They say you are crowned with knowledge. And then he says the wealth of the wise is their crown. So the wealth of the wise. May God give you wisdom so that you carry the crown of wealth as well in Jesus' name. But the folly of fools yields folly. A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is deceitful. He who fears the Lord has a secure fortress. And for his children it will be a refuge. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life, turning a man from the snares of death. He says, a large population. Uh -huh. What does he say? Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 14, verse 17. Let me start from there. He says, a quick-tempered man does foolish things, and crafty man is hated. 18. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. 19. Evil men will bow down at the presence of the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. Uh -huh. He says in verse 21, He who despises his neighbor sins, but blessed is he who is kind to the needy. Do not those who plot evil go astray, but those who plan what is good, love, find good, find those who, find, who plan what is good, find love and faithfulness. All hard work brings to profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. The wealth of the wise is the crown, is their crown, but the folly of fools yields folly. A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is deceitful. He who fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for his children it will be a refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a man from the snares of death. A large population is a king's glory, but without subjects, a prince is ruined. A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays, displays folly. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker. But whoever is kind to the needy honors God. 
When calamity comes, the wicked are brought down, but even in death the righteous have a refuge. Wisdom reposes in the heart of the discerning, and even among fools she lets herself be known. Proverbs 14.34 Righteousness exalts a nation, Haha. but sin is a disgrace to any people. Verse 35 A king delights in a wise servant, but a shameful servant incurs his wrath. Proverbs 14 Beloved, we are thankful to the Lord. He has brought us into a time where tomorrow in Kenya, on 13th of September, we receive a new president inauguration. As we sound the trumpet and bless the name of the Lord for this doing, we also want to pray that righteousness will exalt the nation and sin will be a disgrace to any people. We move on now to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. It's a powerful thing to be in the presence of God, proclaiming his word and aligning ourselves to his purposes and his plans and his favor. Ecclesiastes 8. This is about wisdom, recommended as an antidote against the temptations and the vexations arising from the vanity of life. When you keep the king's command, it says in the book of Ecclesiastes 8.1, it says, who is as the wise man? Who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face to shine. Ha <laughs> ha! And the boldness of his face shall be changed. Verse 2. I counsel thee to keep the king's command and that in regard of the oath of God. Verse 3. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand in an evil thing. Stand not in an evil thing. For he doeth whatever pleaseth him. This is Ecclesiastes 8. Beloved, let me mention that wisdom is a shelter. We must come to the place of seeking God for wisdom. Seeking God, heavenly wisdom. It makes a man, a good man. It just makes you from coming from just an ordinary person to being a super ordinary person. From being a natural person to being a supernatural person. That word super exists. Let me tell you, all the gods of the earth exist at different names. But our God is the great God. Yahweh is his name. Elohim is his name. Rapha is his name. Jireh is his name. And Yeshua is his son. That is why our prayer is not to our God who in heaven. The prayer is our Father who art in heaven. There is a big difference and that's why a lot of times people will say, I trust God, put God first, God, God. But they are not telling you which God. When you bring the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ into the picture, everybody shrivels. They want to say, no, B, you have to include other ones. Hey, you cannot just pray in Jesus' name here. We are also other faiths. Eh? You are taking, uh, you are not really considering. Let me tell you, in, when it comes to the things of God, Hey, 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 beloved of God, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And His power is evident. His grace is capacity, it's capacity upon us. Heavenly wisdom will make a man, a good man, emboldening him against the adversaries, their attempts and their scorn, and teaching them that the sentence that is passed by a righteous dad against all the evil works, even though the execution of a sentence is long delayed, that it shall be well in the end for those who fear, who fear God. We bless the Lord for Ecclesiastes chapter 8. I encourage you to look at verse 11 and verse 12 of Ecclesiastes 8. We come to the book of Amos chapter 4 by the grace of God. Amos chapter 4 is what we are proclaiming as the Lord helps us as we move on in the journey of 150 days of Psalms. We proclaim 8 chapters of the Bible every day and we read it and we meditate upon it and we memorize it and the Lord is helping us. This is what the word of the Lord says. Hear this, you cows of Bashan, on Mount Samaria, you women who oppress the poor and crush the needy, and say to your husbands, bring us some drinks. The sovereign Lord has sworn by his holiness. The time will surely come when you will be taken away with hooks, the last of you with fish hooks. You will each go straight through bricks in the wall and you will be cast out toward Hamon. Toward declares the Lord. Go to Bethel and sin. Go to Gilgal and sin yet more. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes 
every three years, burn leavened bread as a thank offering and brag about your free will offerings. Boast about them, you Israelites, for this is what you love to do, declares the Lord. I gave you empty stomachs in every city and lack of bread in every town, yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. I also withheld rain from you when the harvest was still three months away. I sent rain on one town and withheld it from another. One field had rain and another one dried up. People staggered from one town to town for water. But they did not get enough to drink. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. Many times I struck your gardens and vineyards. I struck them with blight and mildew. Locusts devoured your fig and olive tree. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. I sent plagues among you as I did to Egypt. I killed your young men with the sword along with the captured horses. I filled your nostrils with the stench of your camps, yet you may have not returned to me, declares the Lord. I overthrew some of you as I overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You were like a burning stick snatched from the fire, yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what I will do to you, Israel. Because I will do this to you, because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. He who forms mountains and creates the wind and reveals his thoughts to man, he who turns dawn to darkness and, hallelujah, retreads the high places of the earth, the Lord God Almighty is his name. Beloved, I mentioned to you that the word that has been spoken here in the book of Amos chapter 4 verse 13 in the Hebrew, original Hebrew, it gives us the word that we look at the Lord is, you know, being able to show us exactly the existence, the self-existent or eternal Jehovah. He is self-existent. The, this is the name Jehovah. That's our God, Yahweh, that we call on to. The Lord of hosts. That is a mass of persons, particularly record, organ, regularly organized for war. It says the Lord of hosts, God has prepared a major army. It says, Lo, he that formed the mountain and created the wind and declares unto man, what is his thought that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth? The Lord, the Lord, the God of hosts is his name. Amos. Chapter 4. Let us return to the Lord. His great works are upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, we come to the book of Proverbs, uh, the book of Romans, chapter 13, from verse 1 to 14. And because this program's intention is not to replicate and just simply recite the Bible, I want you to read Romans 4 13. One of the things I want to bring to your understanding is that, you know, obedience to civil magistrates is one of the laws of Christ, whose religion makes people good subjects. So, our nation that bears the name Kenya uh, sat under a Supreme Court ruling and everybody accepted it, even though they did not speak nice things about the ruling, but they all accepted it. So, obedience to civil magistrates is one of the laws of Christ. Whose religion makes people good subjects? As believers, we are good subjects. Love to our fellow men is a debt that must always be in the pain, yet always owing. For love is inclusive of all duties and is in the image of Christ upon the soul. That is why it says this, Let no debt remain outstanding except the debt to love one another. Romans 13 verse 8 and in these words, we stand by them and tell the Lord, how great are your works. Let every debt that it left outstanding, let it be cleared and let us owe nothing but love. In the name of Jesus, if there is any challenge with your work in God and with your finances, may this word come alive 
For how great are the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let there be no debt left outstanding except the debt to love one another. It says, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. May this be your portion that you will not have debt in your life. You will have the owing of man only love. Where well, it says, Oh, no man anything. But to love one another, for he that loves one another has fulfilled the law. May that make us to be good subjects, even wherever we are in different nations. As the word of God tells us clearly, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Ah, wonderful people of God. Romans chapter 13. Indulge. Go deeper. Deep. 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 Read it. Oh no and nothing but love. Even Kenya which has owed nearly 10 trillion in terms of debt. Kenya hear the word of the Lord. You shall owe nothing but love in the name of Jesus. God is going to help our GDP as a nation. God is going to help our GDP as families. God is going to help us that we are going to be educated of Him of physical and spiritual and over also solical matters. That everything that concerns finances, may the Lord begin to teach us. May the Lord begin to equip us. May they begin to be, may we begin to receive the grace of Joseph. The grace to organize and to plan for days of famine. They play rubber tezal abai in the name of Jesus. May God who does great works do these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Ephesians. Ephesians 2, a very key scripture. I'll just read from verse 1 to 10. And then I will leave you to read the rest. Because as we mentioned, our desire and our goal is to make sure that as many of us as possible are interacting directly with the word of God individually. If you don't have a hard copy, hard copy Bible, it's important for you to get. That's why whenever we go out for missions by the grace of God, we are able to share the Bible, the copy of the Bible. The copy of the Bible... The copy of the Bible is very, very important. It is not a free book. You have to buy it because it takes resources to build it. We thank God that there are so many copies in every language that man is without excuse. By grace only, through faith, are you saved. Ephesians chapter 2, then quickly into Romans chapter, uh, Ecclesia, uh, Colossians chapter 2, and then we shall conclude with uh, Revelation chapter 2 and we thank God that he's helping us to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Ephesians chapter 1, I will read 1 to 10 and then from there we shall move on to Colossians. I will read only three verses from, uh, actually five verses from 9 to 14 and then we shall finish on with Revelation. I encourage you to have a notebook where you write down these things. God is going to give you an encounter. You will experience him. The Lord will give you favor. The Lord will hide you under his wings and you will experience his presence. So he says, as for you, you are dead in transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts like the rest. We were like objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us in with, up with him in Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works lest anyone should boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God created, uh, God prepared for us in advance to do. Beloved, this is the bedrock of the Christian faith we follow. 
the bedrock of salvation, the bedrock of walking with God. Because one of the things you need to know is that salvation is a gift. It is free. You receive it by faith. It's not somewhere you go. It's not a decision you make. You say, ah, I will not smoke again. I will not drink again. Now I'm saved. No. Kuokoka sio mangu, sio ile kitu umefanya. It's not the works you've done. It's not something you can get merit for. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 2. Also in the book of Colossians, I just want to bring attention to this very, very important fact. And this is what makes us as believers to be able to be separate from anybody else. We must get rid of denominational pride. Because denominational pride separates us from receiving from Yeshua, our God, our Lord Yahweh. That's his name, Yah. Hallelujah. In the scripture, it says, I am that I am. That's who he is. You may want to be civil and tell people, let's put God first. Which God are you putting first? When you say, let's put God first, there are those that put mammon as their God. And they say, I put God first. But which God are you putting first? You see, every politician, when they pick up a microphone, they say, Let's be good. it's good to put God first. Which God are you putting first? It could be God of the stomach. It could be God of mammon. It's important that it's the God of the Bible. The God, Yeshua, the Creator, Elohim. That's the God that we put our confidence in, not just any other name. They say we are trying to be civil. So because we are trying to be civil, we say that put God first. So it sounds nice, we clap. But are you taking time to see and realize what God are we putting first? The best place to put God is center. In the center of everything is the Lord Jesus Christ. That there will be no second, there will be no second. There'll be no third. There's no order. He's the Alpha. He's Omega. He's in all. Hallelujah. He's the Almighty. You cannot replace Him. He's self-existent. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And that's why when we hear the terms, put God first, we need to say in Jesus' name that it's important to put it that we are not being civil, uh, bringing all the idols of the nations into the name God because there are people who believe in those idols and they subscribe to those forms of worship that Yahweh does not subscribe to and that nations are only exalted by righteousness. It says in the book of Proverbs 14.34 Righteousness exalts a nation. When it begins from the bottom where everybody is, from the fisherman, when he's fishing and he gets a, a different kind of a fish, he will not all of a sudden just say, uh uh, this one I will sell you twice the price. You, you did the same way, you fished the same way, you put the fish, you did not do anything for that fish to be different. <laughs> but now when you get the fish, you want to hide it and say, no, this fish, uh uh, I cannot sell it to you. So righteousness exalts a nation. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 2 verse number 1, it says, For I would that you know great conflict I have for you, and that for them that are in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. This is Paul starting to explain. But as he writes this letter to the Colossians, one of the things that really captures my heart is that believers who believers who don't understand the perfections of Christ and have you know and, and, and have a well settled judgment of the great truth of the gospel. If you don't have the great truth, you have not settled the great truth of the gospel. You will not be spared from the ensnaring eh, insinuations that follow for those who come and tell you salvation is like this, salvation is like that. They corrupt the gospel principles. So all true Christians have a salvation complete in him. And do not pin their faith on the opinions of philosophers, nor bear the yoke of ceremonial law. There is a difference between a Christian and a disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple of Jesus Christ followed Jesus even when there was no bread. 
even when there was no fish. If your purpose today, not to just bear the name Christian, but to bear the marks of Jesus and become a disciple of Jesus Christ, that as a disciple now, you are pinning your Christianity not on the basic principles of the people that tell you, the philosophers, you know, or the yoke of ceremonial law, that whereby now you are saying it is by only by Sabbath day that I must do this. Yet you are walking in ways that are not righteous. Christ alone is the hope of glory, and in Him we are complete. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are complete in Him. Colossians 2 verse, 20, verse 10 says, And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Thank you, Holy Spirit. May you be lifted. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us to get out of that, mile, out of that miry clay. May you be encouraged. May you find strength. May you be lifted out of that quagmire. And if you are going through grief, it's important to know that that value was prescribed in Psalm 23 verse 4, it says, For as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy staff and thy rod comfort me. I pray for anyone under the sound of my voice that is bereaved. May the staff and the rod of the Lord Jesus be with you at this time and take you through that valley. Don't pay, don't stay there. Keep moving through the valley in the name of Jesus. Revelation chapter number two. Revelation two. Just a quick summary, and we are out of we are in the time that the Lord has allowed us. So we bless the Lord and give him the praise. Hallelujah. We always have time. We always have time. I also want to bless the Lord for you. Uh, that uh, is tuning in. I thank you, Pauline, for being here throughout, and also thank you, my brother. Please do leave a comment so that I can make a mention and pray over you, even as we continue with the live recording. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Revelation one to twenty nine is a message to the Ephesus from the Lord Jesus Christ concerning the things which are, and the first love. They left, and the message to Pagamos, Pagamos, concerning the false doctrines, and also a message to Smyrna, concerning the persecutions, and another one is a message to Thyatira, concerning Balism and Nicolaitism. Beloved, these three churches, these are how many churches? Ephesus, Pergamos, Smyrna, Thyatira. These four churches are right now happening on the earth. That's why we have the things that were, the things that are, and the things that are to come in the book of Revelation. The Lord also tells us that as we read the book of Revelation, we also are able to receive direct blessings from Him in Revelation 1 verse 3. The book of Revelation should not scare you into not reading it. You must constantly be there. So let me help us to understand this message to these four churches that are mentioned. Balism and Nicolaitism, even today, is happening. False doctrines are being preached even today. False doctrines. People treating false doctrines that people go to church basically for things and they have not gone to worship the Messiah and these are the things that the Lord speaking to these four churches so we see messengers of Ephesus Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira he that has an ear let him hear what the Holy Spirit will say to the church and let him beware Lest by turning a deaf ear to the voice of the Spirit, he lose his faculty of spiritual hearing and thus grow cold towards Christ, by be without victory in tribulations or find himself being, an, being in apostasy, carried away by every wind of doctrine. Beloved, that is the uh, indication of blindness. Yes, indication of blindness. So one thing that we need to run away from also is the indication of deafness. 
The moment you are spiritually deaf, you grow cold towards Christ. You become zero victory in your tribulations. And you find being apostate, walking away in apostasy and being moved by every wind of doctrine. If they say we are selling this and that so that you can see the kingdom of God, you are busy running to buy. You must know that we must come to the place of he was an heir. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So as we, those who are bound to be overcomers under every test, whose faith keeps them in vital touch with Jesus Christ, the head of the church, we must remain in touch in that tribulation, hallelujah, as the new government comes over Kenya, Starting tomorrow as we sound shofar. Hallelujah. I can't wait to sound shofar. It's sound shofar. It's sound shofar. Because the trumpet is one of the things God put in my hands. And he gave me new lungs to blow it. So I know that God is doing the supernatural over Kenya. I pray for you, beloved, as we come to an end of this transmission. May the great works of the Lord be manifest upon you. If you are here, you are not born again. Or if you are here, you are backslidden. Or you have ears and you do not hear. Friendship with the world is an enmity with God. Even when you go to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, every day, every area. Don't just jump onto every sound that is being made. Even though it is popular and trending. You may find yourself that that is why this thing called sounds. You say, use this sound. You see it in this software, in this social media. You just say, oh, let me just do this one. Okay, let's dance like this, all of us. We dance like this. You do not know that in the realm of the spirit, there's a pattern that is being picked of all these human beings. These softwares that we are being using right now. Right now, I was talking to a friend of mine who said, do not tire making these scriptures. Do not tire doing this broadcast. Don't tire, he said to me. Because it's for another time. That is coming where there will be a rare, 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 rare word of God. You will not find it anywhere. You look for it, you will not find it. You look for the choirs that used to praise God and honor God. They will not be there. They will be doing TikToks. They will be doing TikToks. They will not be worshipping the Lord. No, they will be going for followers. They want followers, not Jesus. They want followers. Look, it's coming, beloved. You remember, put a mark on this video. Because it will be a reminder. A time is coming, beloved, where people are turning away from the true living gospel to follow after things of them, men. And followers is what determine whether God is with a person or not. Let me tell you, that is not so. Even the spiritual fathers are not the spiritual fathers that we know physically. There are others in the villages that have labored for the Lord. Nobody knows their name. But here and we see a trendy man of God with bodyguards. We say, ah, this is now the man God has chosen. Lest you be discouraged and be swayed and carried by the wind of doctrine, remain in the Lord. I mentioned to you Malcolm David. Remain in the Lord. I want you to say to yourself, you, 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 speak to you the word of God. Say, you Malcolm David, you shall not jump onto every sound. You shall make a sound for the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I pray for you. I pray with you. Receive the Lord in your life. Also, as I come to a conclusion, I also want to thank God that we started a Swahili page. Uh, Siku Mian Hamsini Zazaburi. It's available, we're only capturing only the psalm and then putting in some bit of this gospel for as many people to be born again. So please like that page. Even, even though you don't understand Swahili, let somebody else also uh, be able to find it on the social media and let us be able to hear the word of God. So are you there? You'd like to give your life to Christ? I want you to pray with me. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire 
in Jesus name amen if you pray that prayer the Lord has recovered you from that realm of darkness into his marvelous light may his presence shine on you may he shine on us may his power be upon us in Jesus name let us agree father we are now concluding the broadcast in your presence and we thank you that we are quickened and refreshed the Lord we shall own nothing but love and father we pray that we shall be under the authority of the nations and of Lord the people you've put in authority over us in total submission we come to you from Romans 13. Father, we pray now as we end this broadcast that your hand will be upon us in every way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Shalom, beloved. You can stay in touch with me on the WhatsApp, plus 254-722-087087. You can also be able to, you know, uh, support the media ministry by sending your love gift on that number or even staying in touch and saying, this is what I want to do. If you are there, you would want to be part of this media work, may the Lord help us because there's a lot of work that the Lord is helping us to do. And we need a, a lot of equipment. We need a lot of uh, help from Jesus, really. The Lord bless you. Shalom. See you in the next video.